Um, okay, so welcome, thanks for coming. Um, my name is Magnus, I work for DFID, and I'm John Button. I work for um, whoever's willing to take me, acted and acted in this case. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about the opportunities that I've seen as a humanitarian advisor working in Sindhu Punjab since October um, and uh, discuss where these design principles that John will show us could possibly be applied. But we'll get to that. It's a long story in itself. Marquez uh, knows very well uh, part of the, the shelter design cluster. Um, so we hope to make these houses in a way that won't be destroyed by, by the next flood. Uh, just a couple of anecdotes about my travels in Sindh. Um, every time I would go to a village, I would always ask, where is the food that you grow? What do you grow? And how do you grow it? As a gardener, I'm kind of interested in how people grow here. And uh, about only about 10, 20% of villages had any garden at all. When they did, it was this size. Yeah. This is for a hundred household village. Uh, and that would be enough for like my onion patch for my family. So leave it there and you go from there. Okay, so permaculture. It's very, very complex. It's not just, this is my beloved Tasmania, where I come from, where permaculture came from. Why did it come from Australia? Because nowhere on the map, on the, on the surface of this, this planet have so few people done so, such a successful job in destroying so much in such a short time. First of all, we look at our situation. These two photographs represent soil. Yeah? That's soil. I, you don't need to be either a farmer or a gardener or anybody else to see that these two soils are almost like completely different substances. One is inert, dead. This is most of the soil. Most of the soil, not, not only there in Sin, where I've been the last uh, week or so, it's all over the agricultural world. This stuff that's called soil is, is so far removed from this other material here, which is alive. Okay, get on with it, John. Stop talking. Results. I just want to show you a few, a few results that uh, I've been lucky enough to be uh, associated with. This is a place called Tiruvannamala in Tamil Nadu, South India. Uh, we want to, you can see this is not really very fertile land. It's, there's a few thorny, thorny shrubs down the bottom left-hand corner here, but uh, apart from that, there's nothing, yeah? This photograph was say, taken 18 months later. Let me say, I always work with the minimum interventions. I always work with, I've almost always worked with very grassroots organisations. Money's great. We can speed up the process. We can also do destructive things very fast. And what we try and do in permaculture is we try and really follow through the consequences of our steps. We're not talking about good or bad. Essentially, they don't exist. What does exist, though, is consequences. Let me tell you that in 18 months, by the time this photograph was taken, we put down a well, and we had well of water at 8 metres, and we have never lost it. That's the difference. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the way the mountain is now. Uh, the, trees, the trees are now... Uh, it's impossible to stop them, I should say. Now. Why is it impossible? Not because of the trees we plant, but because the people believe in it. I knew that we'd won when, after, after four years, somebody lit a fire on this mountain. And what happened? The nearest community went up and put the fire out. I thought... Hallelujah! I don't normally say hallelujah, but I did anyway. Uh, whatever I said, perhaps I didn't say hallelujah. Perhaps I'm lying. Perhaps I'm listening to a melodrama. Okay, but anyway, I knew that as soon as the people saw it, there was more value to have trees on those mountains than to have a fire. You can't lose now. Whenever there's an outbreak of fire, there's, five, there's eight watchmen with modern technology, a little mobile phone. They, they ring up hundreds of students pour onto that mountain and they beat that out. This is a, this is a mountain. You saw what that, that mountain was like. 
For 150 years, there hasn't been a forest on that mountain. And it stopped. We turn it around this Let me tell you something else about this. When I first went there, I saw clouds in the morning on top of that mountain. Okay. Same thing again. We created swales all over. You can't really see it. We created swales, these, these horizontal things, all over this almost flat land. And around every tree, we've created its own little microclimate. You know, again, observation. Where does fertility start? It starts in the desert from the oasis and it spreads out. And that's what we do. We observe that not only in the desert, but everywhere. Abundance starts from an edge, from a little nucleus. So we try and create a new bag or in a, in a village. That is a nucleus in itself. That's abundance. That's an abundance of resource. That's where the animals are. That's where the water is. Now we're getting closer to home. Okay, this was taken up for 18 months. I haven't seen it for two years. I, I look forward to seeing it again. I have no doubt you can't see those hills now. There's no, there's no question about it. That those hills would be buried under the forest. In fact, on that, on that mountain I showed, people were complaining because they didn't get such a good view of the sunset because of all those damn trees that I've planted. It is, it is going to be, because it's going to, redu it's going to reduce by at least one to two degrees. We're only talking about incremental change. It's going to reduce the heat uh, of, the, of the fields itself in, in the summertime, increase it in the wintertime when it's colder. So it will have an impact in that sense. And just the very fact that you've got trees associated with it and they're in hopefully repeated means that the escape of organic material otherwise born on the wind is actually limited and will stay in your field. It won't be a, a, as a radical a change as the one I was talking about around the village, but it, it, it will have an impact. Another area that I was looking about in respect of uh, of large scale uh, production and seeing that one, that the soil is very clay soil and two, that there is water close to the surface. I, I wondered and I saw that aquaculture is being done and I, I sort of wondered if it's been experimented here, uh, uh, aquaculture with the rice cropping that's done here. Okay, just come back to that as well. Yes. Something like this. If you imagine a space the size of this room, latrine block at one side, uh, which is coming in on, on the, the left here. So latrine block here, let's say about this place. And you, you dig down and you put some gravel and some earth and, and close it off from the plants. This, this problem would lead to, I don't know, uh, bamboo production, bananas, whatever. Uh, so now it's over to you guys um, if there's any questions. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for this uh, wonderful presentation. Um, in your experience in many, many countries, who are the likely opponents of this wonderful technique? Uh, seed companies, yeah. uh, <laughs> fertilizer companies. Please don't get me wrong, I'm not against fertilizer. Please don't get me wrong, I'm not against the use of synthetic uh, uh, by uh, pesticides in, in given circumstances are always aiming to reach a point, as any good farmer is, of less dependence on it. But initially, these will be where the greatest resistance uh, will lie. Also, also, let's let's be let's be frank. Change is always a difficult thing. So there is a problem of uh, availability, the major problem of uh, safe pure water. So the process of bioremediation. Yes. So can we couple this uh, the permaculture or uh, the yeah. of bioremediation? Absolutely. I mean, well, I'm sure you're well aware. There's specific plants that are particularly well adapted to specifically uh, uh, deal with specific um, uh, pollution factors. And uh, yeah, we, we deal with it. In fact, all plants tend to tend to harvest different nutrients for their own well-being. Some of those can be can also feel it to cause the gathering of pollutants of different capacities. Yeah, so certainly we deal with uh, with the uh, phyto uh, phyto uh, remediation also. Right. Yes, depending on it's different plants in different every region, of course. Thanks everybody for coming. Thank